All right. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. We are certainly happy to have you here today on our Comics News Today. And uh, we got ourselves a guest, too, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's it's uh, me. It, it is you. You are one of them. Yes, but uh, you're here a lot. We're kind of, I don't know, kind of tired of the booster, I think, a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh. You know. Oh. No, of course, never. We love our booster, our oily I'm kiwi. From cry. He's very important. He's very important. Uh, You'll but, miss uh, me when I'm dead. <laughs> yes, we would for sure. Uh, but guys, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, do keep in mind, of course, uh, being live streamers, we really appreciate you guys hitting that share button and let your family and friends and extended community know what's going on so they can come over here and join us. Also, don't forget about all the, all the links down below and uh, please check them out, particularly to our fan speak uh, uh, page on Facebook. Uh, it's a real fun community. There's a lot of information come up in the, uh, coming up in there and uh, we'd love to have your voice involved as well. Uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, today we're going to be covering news as we usually do. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, talk uh, about an Indiegogo that's all going on, which we love to do. You guys know that. But uh, before I get to that, let me uh, say hello to the rest of the panel here. We have ourselves Todd from Indiecom TV. How you doing, dude? I'm doing really good. Really, really good. Happy to have uh, Cody join us. Uh, he sent me some copies of uh, 1 and 2. And we're getting review done for Anycom TV by Preston Poulter. Ooh, nice. But I, I took a look at him himself, and just my first, review, you know, review and view of them, or, or re me reading them, I was very impressed. And, I, you know, first time through, I always look at a lot of things with the R and the coloring and things like that. Sure. And the coloring is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Really works really well with this style of artist, because mm -hmm. he's sort of a, you know, uh, less is more kind of guy. You know, um, and it just, man, it really blew my mind. I was really, you, cause it take, you know what it takes to sort of immerse yourself and, and get into the environment and he sure. does a good job. You, you're brought into the environment. So I can't wait to take a look at both these projects. Cause I also looked at the other one and that coloring and that artist both look really good. Oh, Thank you kindly. On. Rock on. You're uh, now, um, I see Pope Fires come in here. Hello. Uh, Lady Celtic Moon as well as Roger. Uh, nice to have you in here. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, um, uh, speaking of that, uh, with the my coffee, Akihabara, on Edicom TV, which is on Sunday at 10 a.m. in the morning, uh, Eastern Standard Time, usually, um, uh, I was thinking, you know how I do my opening spiel and I talk about the top of the week, you know, things that are going on in uh, gaming, right, nerddom. Uh, what mm -hmm. I was thinking about doing this week is, uh, you know, I have a couple little things. I think I will talk about Greedfall a little bit, but uh, I was also thinking about doing kind of a mini review for uh, T-Bird and Throttle. Uh, because uh, one thing we haven't done a lot of is uh, review a lot of these Indiegogos, you know, this Indie Revival stuff. We haven't really talked about it. And uh, I think I might do some mini reviews on the top of uh, Coffee Akihab uh, Akihabara for that, you know. Yeah, that would actually work. Yeah, Considering what cool. we're trying to do is, yeah. is get those. That's exactly, that's perfect. Great yeah. idea. I like that. Yeah, and I love T-Bird and Throttle. I mean, uh, I backed uh, whew, a lot of uh, these indie books, and uh, uh, some of them are, are great, some of them are okay. Uh, but T-Bird and Throttle is my favorite so far, dude. It's just absolutely killer. Now, to be fair, I didn't get Bigfoot Bill, and everyone's telling me that I should regret it horribly. Uh, but oh well. Uh, <laughs> but I did get T-Bird and Throttle, and I think it's really a beautiful book. So I'm going to talk about that one first. Uh, but uh, we'll see if I can't do like a mini little five-minute review or less. Uh, but uh, it sounds fun. Uh, but uh, we're also joined, of course, by the llama himself. How you doing, Denali? Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. How's it going, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> doing doing well, sir. Yeah. No. Um, it's pretty cool that we have Cody as our guest. Um, as Todd mentioned, uh, with the his Iron Verse. Um, I just recall that. Cody was one of the first Indiegogo pages that we kind of looked over back when back when we started. You know. It the is. Whole thing. That, yeah. That's what I was thinking. I, I know. I <laughs> I know. I've uh, talked about Jack Irons. I knew I had. Yep. And it was probably one of the very first things we did. You're right. Yeah. Uh, over a year now. Ooh, long time. Yeah. 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 So uh, that's awesome. And of course, let's come over here and say hello to our guests. Hello, Cody. Howdy, folks. How are you doing? I think we're all doing well. <laughs> uh, and uh, all right. Yeah. Yes, we are doing well. We are. I'll take it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, um, uh, like I was saying, you know, we remember uh, uh, seeing your work uh, with Jack Irons and such, and uh, a lot of people were talking about that uh, back when we started this channel. Uh, so uh, uh, you got something new going on. It sounds like you have an entire uh, universe going on, which is absolutely awesome. 
Booster is telling us he'll be right back, so that's all. That's good. Uh, but uh, why don't you do me this favor, uh, Cody? It's the first time you've been on here with us. I know you've been in a lot of other places, but uh, why don't you tell the folks a little bit about yourself and uh, you know how you got to where you are now? All righty. Well, um, I'm Cody Fernandez, um, writer, creator of Jack Iron Steel Cowboy, and chief editor over at Ironverse Comics. Um, we're putting uh, uh, the space back into the in, back into weird westerns. Um, let's see. So uh, last uh, last year, uh, I guess around January, I started a uh, crowdfunder that was unsuccessful for for a, uh, a comic series that I've been working on for well over a decade. Um, Jack Iron Steel Cowboy. Um, I had written scripts yeah, about over a decade ago now. Um, about five years back, uh, between four and five, uh, Aaron, closer to five years back, uh, I had, um, started looking for an artist, uh, lucked out, found, uh, Maximiliano Dallo. Uh, he was our incredible line artist on Jack Irons, Steel Cowboy. Uh, we hit a rapport and I got the first issues line art done. I did a cruddy, uh, self, uh, lettering. Uh, then Maxi did his, uh, slightly better, but still cruddy, uh, self lettering. And then, um, you know, I started marketing it, trying to put it out to, um, you know, the indie publishers, anybody who would take a look at it. No interest. Uh, one person was kind enough to say he enjoyed the read, at least, but uh, was not right for their publishing house at the time, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then uh, we did that for a good, good, uh, I did that for a good two years. And then, um, then I kind of, I, I kind of let it slip by. I had other things going on in my life. And then the beginning of uh, last year, I ran the the first crowdfunder, no interest, uh, about ten bucks I got. And then uh, I ran it again, uh, just shortly after it had finished. And um, the timing was right on that one, and I was able to generate interest. Uh, I joined social media, which was a huge boon. Uh, oh yeah. Um, and I pushed the hell out of it. I, I mean, I, I hustled like a mother shocker. <laughs> Excuse my language. And um, uh, it, it was a, a heck of an experience. We were able to get uh, about 8,500 bucks on it, which was enough to fund uh, uh, issue uh, one, getting colors, and issue two, um, getting made and colors, which was great. But uh, even more so, I found an uh, interest in an indie publisher, uh, Wicked Publishing, who uh, allowed me to offer physical copies during the campaign, which made a huge difference in it becoming a success. And um, basically, it's just been the journey of that. Uh, we released issue number one to uh, domestically to backers uh, this last January. Um, uh, yeah, so, so the January I was referred to was 2018, folks. Uh, <laughs> this one, 2019, we released uh, Jack to, to backers, uh, the, the issue number one. And uh, we just started... Um, well, about two weeks ago, we started getting issue two out to backers. Uh, issue two had a hell of a long and, and kind of a hard hard road to, to get in there. But we, we finally reached there, and it's finally hitting backers and getting reviews, getting getting the, the, the interaction I've been waiting for as I've been sitting on the finished issue for months now. So uh, super excited about that. I, I, I can't wait to kind of dive into people's thoughts and uh, improve. Well, that's cool, dude. And uh, as I'm sitting here trying to remember and stuff, I do remember that uh, uh, Pixel Trader did a really good tribute to Jack Irons. I remember him uh, drawing the character. Uh, I think that might have been on our very first Drawn and Quartered fan edition, actually. I'm pretty sure that's where he drew it. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, so uh, I, I, there was definitely some interest. Uh, so I guess I'm coming in to uh, your work at the very end of it, meaning, you know, when you had success. Um, because before that I hadn't, uh, I had, I don't think I've heard of it. So, you know, congratulations, uh, for you, uh, getting that out there. Uh, but of course here today, we're here to talk about, uh, your new project that you have going on. So, uh, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, share screen with you guys. And then I'm going to come over to the Indiegogo page and let you, uh, talk to the folks about it. That sounds great. All right. So, uh, let's go over here. And, uh, of course the new one is called Cactus Coyote. Interesting. An yeah. alien yeah, shapeshifter yeah. desperately tries to pay off an immense gambling debt by any shady means. So we're, we're kind of taking the uh, Native American uh, coyote, the uh, the trickster uh, type of uh, play on things, I see. Yeah, very much so. In fact, um, uh, what Jack does for Earth's lore in Ironverse Comics, uh, Coyote does for space. Um, oh, okay. I had always, when I had planned this out, um, Jack wasn't the only scripts I wrote. Uh, I, I wrote... Uh, at least two more scripts. Um, but my, my, my original idea, what Ironverse Comics, before it had a name, before anything, I wanted to have a uh, Western heavy metal themed uh, 
group of superheroes. And that's kind of what Iron Verse Comics is working at. Um, in that vein, uh, Cactus is very close to our Martian Manhunter. Um, I see. But uh, not, not exactly. Uh, he's he, he's uh, a, a lot wackier. Um, he's only about seven years old, uh, so he's still a pup. Um, there's, there's a, the, um, the Ironverse comics takes place in a, in a grim, dark universe, everything's suffering and pain and, 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 uh, just, just, it's the apocalypse. You're either under a, fa- fa- a very fascist, uh, overbearing government, or you're under one of the four, um, horrors or horsemen. Um, either way, you're not having a fun life. I see. And, um, and, uh, Cat's Coyote, uh, he, uh, is traveling through, uh, Spinaroonie town, which is one of the, uh, criminal, um, outpost, probably the best in the, the, the strongest in the galaxy that, um, can keep away from both, both the, uh, galactic government and the, uh, four horrors and kind of carved out its own niche and protects the illegal acts and trafficking, smuggling, s- slavery, uh, all kinds of gnarly stuff. But, uh, it's also, uh, kind of the, the Las Vegas of, uh, Ironverse comics. And um, we lean heavily into the uh, gambling theme with with Cactus because uh, it really is uh, one of his main shticks. Ah, cool. And uh, it looks really nice, dude. You got uh, very much a cartoony style here uh, from the artist. Uh, who's this artist again? Andrea Boscolo. Um, some people who um, follow Purity Sin might know his art. He does a lot of her art as well as her comic book that she put out. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, he, he has a history in, in, in like, uh, the, the actual animation, uh, industry, but, uh, he got disillusioned pretty fast. And so we're happy to, uh, to get his talent back out there in, in our own way. Oh, well, and, uh, it, he's, uh, we, we couldn't have nice. asked for, for, uh, yeah, exactly. We couldn't have asked for a, for a better, uh, the, the cartoony style fits, um, cactus just perfectly. Oh, no, it looks like it. And, uh, you know, the uh, interesting thing that's coming to my mind is it seems it feels to me just looking at this is almost a more cartoony version of Saga. Huh, it could very well be. I'm not I think I read two issues of Saga, so I didn't get very far. But I know it's got a um, uh, quite a fan base and and, uh, quite a following. So I'm assuming it's got quite a bit of quality. It is good. It it, it kind of went straight to hell recently because they left. Uh, they let some progressives get a hold of it. But uh, uh, the beginning of that, the first uh, several years of that, was really great. And uh, it's a it's a good story. It has a bit of quirkiness to it, uh, which yours has obviously more quirkiness, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, but it really feels like that. It feels very similar uh, to just more quirky, more whimsical, more uh, uh, you know Roger Rabbit uh, type of uh, thing. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very much. Uh, it's definitely got the the heavy tomb vibe. Uh, as as he gets more into as we explore that issue and, and get further, um, you'll see uh, this first uh, in the the free to read manga on Tapas. Uh, you folks can just type in Cactus Coyote and then T A P A S, and you'll find the free to read uh, forty page uh, manga that uh, Dollar Coins and I put out um, to kind of get a get a vibe of Cactus himself and his abilities and and kind of the vibe of what the issues are going to be like. Um, that, um, there's, the, it, it'll get more grim, dark. It, there'll be more of a contrast and you'll see that, um, whereas Jack Irons is kind of a, a depressing, uh, <laughs> but, but uplifting, uh, uh, thought experiment or, or, uh, or philosophical tale, um, uh, cactus is that sort of but it's more of a manic kind of vibe but it still takes takes a, a lot of similar themes just from a different perspective and um you know reading them both you'll get more perspective on inverse comics as we continue to grow so i'm, I'm kind of uh, i'm very excited for folks to hop on the cactus coyote train but uh you know uh, go ahead and check out the free to read see if it's up your alley because uh maybe maybe the 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 quirkiness isn't isn't your thing or maybe it very much is uh we made sure that there's plenty of ways to find out mm-hmm. yeah well jennifer's saying kind of a uh, ralph bocce style or uh, uh, i don't think i pronounced that correctly but yeah yeah i see that too jennifer uh but yeah. uh, uh it, we've heard that a few times sure uh this little intro is kind of interesting i was just kind of reading through while you were talking but uh, uh cactus coyote was but a tiny rascal in his gold lucky shape uh, shifting days all smiles and a bag of sugar but then this plague uh, a fellow came along and made him a lab rat, made a lab rat out of him. Not like being a science project was bad enough, but to add insult to injury, he stuck a pocket dimension in his stomach and made him eat junk as a dumpster. 
Ha-cha! We're feeling the pain now. Uh, but guess what? The tiny little shapeshifter escaped. Out of those dark labs, he made it to spin a Rooney Town, a galaxy hub for gambling, backdoor dealings, and every sleazy thing you can imagine. Uh, now, uh, hmm. interesting, uh, very interesting. Uh, we took a, uh, a god, a basically. <laughs> and, you, need uh, read a, you need to read it faster, more intense. There. But I was I was going to ask though, uh, what's with the shapeshifter deal? Is that to do yeah. with the uh, cartoon aspect of him? Well, no, I think well, he's a god, of, Coyote, right? Different forms with different abilities. So uh, Catch Coyote is very manga based, so it's got a lot of shonen uh, manga kind of ba- battle transformations or, or different kinds of transformations. Not so much battle for him, more just transformations. Uh, t- you know, time limits on his things. So, uh, if you go down. To where we have the, or maybe it's up. No, it's probably down. Yeah, there's Q Racer, the first arc. Yeah, here we go. Uh, that's one of his his other forms right below. So you've got his first uh, primary, uh, the form he walks around in on top there, and then that is his Zoot Suit form, which uh, allows him to access things that are in his belly. Uh, in the manga, for instance, he has a starship engine much bigger than the ship he's in, wedged in his belly. So he turns into a Zoot Suit form and then shoves a rod in his spine to lock into the uh, into the uh, into that extra engine and then just ride it to hell till it's gonna blow up um there's a lot of different abilities he's, he's got quite a few different forms um but so, so that's the shape shifting bit but there's also um he's part of a race of little cute little shape shifters um they haven't appeared they're not on the indiegogo page but we've been teasing them for a while they're these cute little plush creatures and um they're uh, kind of the polar opposite of the horsemen in, in in our uh in our world and they're they're pretty damn important as well uh he just happens to be one that got screwed over by one of the horsemen in, in an attempt uh plague's goal is to create the perfect life so he found something new to play with got bored of it and just shoved a uh, hazardous waste into him until he forgot about him oh, i see so th- this has a bit of element of the mask involved in it too then yeah that's interesting got a little bit yeah that's cool. Uh, it's quirky. Uh, what do you think, Booster? Uh, I love the art style, man. I want more fun. comics like this with the more cartoony aspect of it. Mm. As it looks awesome, and it looks absolutely mental. <laughs> it like it is very it. much mm-hmm. so. Uh, the first arc mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. Q Racer, which you can see above. It's um, basically it, it's Red Line meets Rocky Racers on uh, in an Ironverse world where uh, Cax Coyote is trying to play every angle he can to. Uh, uh, satisfy his debtors during the race, and uh, it's a race for the control of Spinaroonie Town. Now, is um, that, a, is that a, just a story within the story, or is that a separate uh, comic? So that's the arc. That's the first. Uh, that's the first arc's uh, setting and, and, and goal uh, for the Western um, book here that we're looking at. Whereas the manga, which uh, I believe we do intend to continue, is a is a different arc that also is part of of, of all of it. Um, that'll probably continue to be free to read. However. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's a lot. I, I've uh, I've read uh, Doll, Dollar Coins. Uh, the the mangaka and uh, creator uh, writer has uh, put a lot of passion into this. He's a, he's a good gog a gag uh, manga writer. Uh, he always puts in some very solid jokes that always get me uh, in, in the scripts anyway. And I've read up to issue five, which mm-hmm. I think the first arc has ten issues. And uh, it's it's just incredible work. I really do want us to have uh, you know let let other people see. That's what uh, we're trying to do here with with some hustling. Well, tell me a little bit about these casino coins I see at the bottom here. Oh well, um, if you back at uh, oh god, I'm gonna have to look at the tiers. Uh, bum, 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 bum. I believe it's at uh, fifteen or higher. No, bum, 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 bum. at fifty you get all three uh, of the chips that I saw. I believe 25 you get a random one. Is that it? Yeah. At, at 25, you'll get one of uh, three three casino chips uh, that are from a casino uh, in the book. Um, either the Viper, the Galaxy, or the... Bum, 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 bum. I remember the first two. <laughs> uh, do, 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 uh, or the Calypso. Um, any of those. In fact, uh, there's a page with the opening uh, to the, the Calypso. I believe that's page two of the... Uh, western adaptation here no it's page three page three but yeah um so I, we thought that would be a fun little addition since it's such a big part of spin town and, and and gambling is a giant part uh of uh, cactus Coyote's story it's his primary motivator uh, honestly he has a device called an escape deck which is um it's basically a digital um it can affect reality with these booster pack cards that he can uh he can buy 
And uh, so it's kind of a loot box for real life um, through this thing. And so he, he's kind of addicted and he continuously spends all of his money on what he steals or, or just obtains. He'd call it just obtaining. It's a legitimate business after all. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, <laughs> he, uh, that's kind of his primary factor. He doesn't quite know what he's really getting himself into and he always wants that better bet that that extra extra little push and eventually he'll get ahead and um so far from what i've read uh he's having some difficulty i see uh well it's a cute little addition i think uh you know having some casino chips it's a different uh type of thing i do love how your fixed gold is set at seven 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 uh, that's uh, interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play the trailer. Now, the question I always ask everyone is, uh, am I going to like it? Uh, it's it, it, it's solid. Um, it's mainly um, it, it, it's a track done by Dollar Coins and the Jukebox Bots, which are both an in uh, Ironverse comics band and a band in real life. And um, it's a fun track. And uh, it's mainly just scrolling text and other stuff. And this is before we had some many of the colored pages. So it's it could be better. But I enjoy it. I've, I've seen it, I don't know, a million times now. So I, I certainly enjoy the music. Oh, cool. Well, I'm <laughs> going to click it here in a moment. But uh, i got to ask a question. You keep mentioning dollar coins. I see that's the project is through dollar coins. What What is this dollar coins thing, dude? Dollar coins is, a, uh, is his uh, mangaka pseudonym. Uh, he, he's written a lot of other things under a bunch of different names. And so, uh, we're kind of continuing that track here. Uh, it helps give him the anonymity he likes to, uh, to, to work. And, uh, honestly, I do most of the marketing and promotion anyway, and it's built within, um, you know, my creation and such, uh, in fact, uh, this came about when I was marketing Jack Irons number one, and, uh, he pitched me a, uh, short little page that he had done, uh, with this character. And uh, we just ran with it and had a great rapport, and he helped build uh, so much of, of, of what Ironverse Comics is becoming. And uh, very, very proud to support and, and sign off on this book. Oh, rock on. All right, well, I'm clicking it. It's clicked. All right, we've got a little music. we got a uh, motorcycle with hounds pulling it. Horses. Oh, they're horses, huh? Yeah, uh, people have thought they were pigs, too. I love it. They're, they're, they're every animal. <laughs> Sweet. It's not so bad so far. It's pretty good. At least I don't have someone who's going to sit and talk to me for 50 minutes about how they were working on something for 30 years, and finally it's come to you. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, it's, it's two minutes, so, you know, check out what we got. And this is kind of what you look at and read the page if you if you want more info. <laughs> well, one of the things we've said to many people is um, uh, the fact that uh, most people don't watch the trailers anyway. Uh, but so if you're going to have a trailer, have one like this, which is some fun music and just looking at your project. It's a much better way to go. Hey, I, I have some news about that, by the way. But I'll wait till after. Ask me about trailers. All right. Yeah, I've been noticing the slot machine thing all the way through. That's nice. Yeah, it's a it's a giant theme with him, and uh, I think it's a good one. Um, the the weird western has always had a good affinity for gambling, the poker table, you know, Pharaoh. And, sure. Um, that's kind of his angle. Now, in the game, are they uh, playing um, uh, Texas Hold'em, or are they uh, are they playing something older like Pharaoh, or? Well, in um, in this, I would assume it's some space versions of some. Uh, uh, maybe there are a few Earth games, just because Earth is kind of an oddity in in uh, Ironverse comics. But uh, it's probably mostly just random alien alien games that uh, ended up looking similar. I imagine. Uh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. So, Todd, what did you want to say? So, uh, trailers with graphics and in like you say, a trailer with a person sitting behind a desk talking does not do well no trailers with graphics or animation or even you know like you're doing a little slideshow with with uh intercutting graphics and stuff do do well but they don't have a trackable metric yet but indiegogo and both kickstarter are creating something that will be trackable 
mm-hmm. but they both admitted that the trailers that do well are the ones like he he created yeah no, um, that's true and people mm-hmm. will watch them so trailers don't you know when we when you say trailers don't get watched they do get watched but as soon as somebody sees a person sitting behind a desk they kind of do go away mm-hmm. and, yeah no and, they do you know right? again it's yeah. It's not a. They don't have a metric for tracking this yet. Well, they're building it. About two years ago, uh, maybe a little more, uh, there was a company who uh, basically their their business model is uh, making your your Kickstarter or Indiegogo page for you. Right? Uh, they're mm-hmm. mainly over on Kickstarter, and they they mainly deal with board games. But uh, nevertheless, this company has uh, got a lot of tra- uh, attraction, and uh, they were being quite successful. So they wanted to have a dynamic. Um, you know, study involved in everything at Kickstarter so they could offer their customers and, and, and try to make the best, you know, page they could. And uh, in right. that study, uh, they did a very in-depth look into every part, including the trailer. And, uh, of course, through, through that study, we found out that, uh, um, you know, most people don't watch trailers. I mean, it's literally like only 10% click the trailer, right? And uh, they also found that, uh, like you just said, uh, the sit down and talking to people doesn't work. Uh, the nice little catchy one to two minute thing is does much better uh but um mm-hmm. it was an interesting study they did and you're right indigo and kickstarter are trying to put analytics in uh to kind of cover that and I, I don't think it would be a very hard thing for them to do but uh but we'll see what comes out from it but um nevertheless uh yeah i think it's fine trailer yeah thank you yeah no problem uh and uh we, we've been seeing better trailers come along people are listening uh we've definitely had folks on here over the past year because we've talked to i don't even know how many creators well over 100 and uh, <clears throat> uh some of them had really bad trailers and uh we we give points we say you should do this you do that and uh people have been listening uh, not just to us others as well and uh they've been uh, making better and better pages and i think this is a good looking page over you got your feature up there you have a nice fun little trailer you have other options up here with art uh, we have a good little uh, well-written, I have to say, uh, little intros, which is important. Uh, we have lots of information. We have a lot of uh, perks. Uh, we have art. Uh, the only thing I'm seeing here that is lacking uh, that I would suggest to you is uh, we have all these pages showing up here, uh, but you have no uh, dialogue. Uh, you should have some dialogue in here. Uh, now, you say you have the free uh, comic, uh, so that which is cool, uh, but is there a link to it here? I've been bugging do- uh, Dollar again and again to put it up at the front page like I did, and he's been real stubborn about that. It is in the FAQ um, right there uh, on, on the Indiegogo page, but it's not on the main page, and that's been bugging the hell out of me. Uh, <laughs> that's something we've been bugging oh, yeah. heads. I don't know why he doesn't want to do that. I think it's uh, so people don't get confused on what they're getting. I see. Um, but, yeah. uh, because the art styles are so drastically different. But uh, yeah, so that that's something. And also, we just don't have a the money to fund a letter. He and I have put the uh, money together to get these first uh, about 10 pages finished and done, except for the lettering. And uh, it's not cheap. And um, so that's, no, that's part of why we haven't gotten to any lettering on those pages. Also, because most of those pages won't have much lettering. Uh, with how he's he's been constructing them but uh nonetheless uh that is a goal and that is something we'd like to do um but we'll see i don't think in the next two weeks we'll we'll get to that um unless unless it funds if it funds we'll get right on that (laughs) i see yeah well i'm just saying it's usually good to have that so people can get a look at the dialogue now this uh this overview thing you have here it gives us a taste of the writing ability uh whether you or he wrote that uh because there is uh, obviously this is well written uh, which is a good thing yeah he wrote Uh, yeah, that's so, all his work pages so, uh, i just did little lookups and, and and editor notes yeah no so that's good uh but uh, it's just a suggestion it's something that you should have uh, and of course lettering is a, is yeah. a thing and uh, more than likely you will end up with the ubiquitous eric weathers uh which is awesome uh you know because so, eric is everywhere uh, well, uh, we- Vincent Rush uh, of uh, now he's working on Alterna, Hell Seekers for Alterna. But uh, actually, since last year, I've, uh, our main letter has been uh, Vincent Rush, um, and he does incredible work on Jack. And uh, uh, oh, cool. we'll see if he has time for Cactus. But uh, if not, then yeah, we'll be looking for letters. Oh, rock on! You're, All right, you're, now, yeah, he did a great job on he did a great job on issue two, by the way, because I yeah, was not thank you. I was not taken away from you know he didn't get in the way of the art. It's basically. Yeah. You know, he put, it, there's two things the letter has to do is put it in the right place and make the, the, 
dialogue flow because sometimes an artist will draw a challenging thing with that and then you're you're looping and doing different things with word bubbles your artist didn't do that your your letter did her letter did a great job didn't get in the way and he didn't cover up anything important on issue two didn't happen yeah. he did a great job so, so how i write is i write the script the script goes to my artist the artist does his thing and he has great leeway to add take away panels uh, do what he needs and then i get that back and then i do a a low quality because i'm not much of a letter lettering to that and then my letterer takes that base and, and does it off of that base so um mm -hmm. team effort so thank you <laughs> that's cool uh, uh uh no it's not this it's no that no, we have eric hawkins in here the true eric i do apologize how dare i mention we have weathers. we have the one true eric yes all hail eric all hail eric uh <laughs> but uh, all right now this is what we're gonna do uh, uh cody uh we're gonna jump over and do a little bit of news and then we're gonna come back and take a look at your perks okay uh, so, uh, uh, first thing we're going to start out with is this one and, uh, joy upon joy Denali. All right. From bounty into comics rumor, Marvel to develop richer writer, Nova film with Spider-Man director, John Watts. And basically mm -hmm. they are developing Nova. Maybe as the next Spider-Man stand in since they lost Spider-Man at this time. No, it's going to be Miss Marvel. How dare they think of anyone else? How do you know it's Especially not going to be Miss Marvel? Especially another white man. Yeah, I know, huh? Um, no, I'm sure they'll <laughs> swap him. I'm sure he'll be swapped. Uh, but uh, Sutton writes, I'm hearing that Marvel Studios wants to launch this human rocket they've been developing for years. I scooped it ages ago. And is eyeing Watts for the position. Human rocket? His name is Richard Ryder, otherwise known as Nova. Uh, and he continues with, uh, Watts will want uh, a pay raise from uh, after far from home, uh, netting a billion globally, and the mouse will put up the trucks filled with cash outside of his doorway. Uh, yeah, okay, I don't think it'll take that much, but uh, uh, interesting little article, actually, is a lot of quotes from the people involved. And uh, uh, yeah, no, I like Nova. I think it's fun. I think they did him really well in the uh, uh, animated series there where uh, Spider-Man was working for S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, I think that was fun. They had uh, uh, Iron Fist as well. It was a very different take on it, but I thought it was fun. But uh, wh what do you think, Booster, about uh, uh, Richard Ryder Nova? I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you, sir. I know nothing about this character. His design's really? cool. Really? <laughs> That's all I can tell you. I, he looks cool. Yeah, that's my in-depth opinion on Nova. That's well, all I got. I'm afraid. I'm I'm a, I'm a bit wondering uh, why how they're going to do it because uh, we know with the Guardians of the Galaxy, of course, they they introduced the Nova Core, uh, which I was like, oh, okay, what'd you do that for? You kind of threw away the opportunity of the of Nova himself. So it's like, how are you gonna how are you gonna work this out? You know, I mean, you've already kind of introduced well, the Nova Core as a very different thing than we know well, Nova to be. You know. Well, you got to remember that. In the current MCU, uh, Thanos destroyed the Nora uh, core. He did. Yeah, but that was so. before. Uh, and then when they, we had the uh, uh, them do the time jump and uh, all that stuff, I would assume that uh, he didn't, right? Because they, re they, they basically, in Endgame, they took everything they had done, except for the death of Gamora and uh, Black Widow, really, and they reversed everything. Right. So I don't know that uh, Nova Prime was uh, taken out at all. I mean, right? Well, they didn't reverse everything either. Um, if I remember right, the daughter uh, of Tony still still stuck around. It was that weird. They they decided to do the branch theory of time travel without really sticking to it, which bugged the hell out of me. I was glad sure. that they did it, but uh, I was kind of pissed that they decided to piss on it. <laughs> right. But uh, uh, it, so I really I'm I'm unsure myself. Um, my takeaway from Endgame really was just I was happy that uh, Tony and uh, Cap got a decent enough ending. Uh, it's been 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 plenty of time, and uh, on Nova, uh, that's what I thought the Nova Corps was trying to do when they when they seeded that in uh, in uh, in Guardians. Guardians. But yeah, uh, yeah uh, they definitely did not do much with that, and then like you said, they smashed it. They did. So uh, yeah. and that wasn't part of the snap. So was that part of Tony's snap? I kind of doubt it. But I don't know, and it, well, it, it's a, it's yeah, it's very odd. I have no idea where they would well, go to to introduce Nova. I'm looking at the timeline, though. I'm not looking at what happened on Earth because on Earth, obviously, it's five years after everything that's happened happened. But when they brought, uh, when they dealt with Thanos, they brought Thanos uh, before the fact. 
you see the time aspect. So uh, when when they thought uh, fought and defeated Thanos, it is before he did any of those things. So therefore, that's a different Thanos, if you remember right. He came through the same bridge that um, the 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 Nova, or not not the Nova, the Nebula, uh, uh, um, stand in the the other Nebula. It was a different timeline, a different Thanos sure. is the branch theory, and so oh, he came oh. into that timeline and was defeated. So that other timeline. That timeline that that Thanos that they defeated was on, yeah, that's free and clear. Nothing, none of that happened in that timeline. But the the main MCU timeline, that Thanos still did what he did. The you know Ronin still did what he did. Every, everything's been been done still. It's just uh, I don't know what what uh, how far uh, Tony Snap went. That well, that's really what defines it. Did he but, undo everything Thanos did, or just undo the snap? Yeah, but it also doesn't make any sense because they brought him back in order to stop everything from happening, but yet we're still sitting five years later after the snap. So it doesn't make any sense at all, right? Right. Uh, and because uh, you and I all. will certainly disagree about giving Captain America a good, a good send-off because that was absolutely disgusting what they did with Captain America. Uh, but don't get me started on that. Uh, but, well, that's um, fine. Uh, but you also have to yeah. remember, if, if everything went as what you're talking about, and we're digressing here, but... Um, why would the, if if they brought in um, Thanos in the future, then why did the Hulk need to be clucked um, and lose his right no, arm for the first snap, and then the second snap with um, with Tony Tony yeah. Stark? Yeah, yeah, no, it doesn't so, make yeah, sense. They screw the pooch on it all around. So, yeah. so basically, it's the timeline is messed up because yep. basically the three snaps are saying it happened, it didn't happen, it happened, it didn't happen. So. Now they have the choice. Nova Corps is no longer in the planet that they were on is destroyed. So they have to rebuild Nova Corps if they want to take it in that direction. Yeah, but then, or, then how do we bring the helmet in, seeing as they showed them as just being police uh, that pilot these interesting uh, uh, these interesting craft, uh, right? Because Nova has a magical hat, right? Right, they're supposed to be the. I mean, he's supposed to be the Green Lantern, so maybe he's one of the few out there, in the far, you know, rim territories, where, you know, you know what Nova Nova's known less than Quasar. Why not just bring Quasar? I mean, uh, Nova's a a fringe character that I don't think is even worthy of his well, own movie uh well no, i think he, i think no, go no, ahead, go it's ahead. known because he was in the writer one the young kid nova was did really well yeah he did yeah, yeah. but yeah. the problem with quasar is he's so angsty and emotional right and it's built into his yeah. character uh which of course makes him more dynamic i get that but uh, nova's more quirky fun uh he's more fun dude than quasar Oh, we need a new. We need a Star Lord. Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Not like they turned Thor into that already again, too. So we oh, need God. a. We need a third. We need a third Star Lord now. Okay, huh? I'm. I'm going to another story because you guys are going to trigger me, and Eric's going to laugh because he loves when I get triggered. I can't, he's getting, I don't he's getting talk triggered. About it. It's happening. Next, it's moving it's on. Next. <laughs> All right, from Newsarama, DC editor, or I should say former DC editor, Rob Levin, uh, named as Humanoid new senior editor. So he's transitioning from DC to Humanoids. So who's he replacing? Isn't, wasn't somebody already made this uh, position? No, uh, he's, um, he's taking the empty positions um, that was vacated from with somebody else. Wasn't uh, that so- Wade? No, Wade is the director of creative development. Oh, okay. So he's the second Simone? one. Gail, Gail, where's my oh. popsicle, Simone? No, I don't think it was her. <laughs> um, but, I, I think uh, that was that was the you're thinking of her with the merger, that you know, company that merged. I'm still a little up in the air exactly what humanoids is because uh, they, right? they they do reference the English version of humanoids. So what what is They're this? a French publisher that I know of. So they, they, I don't know any of their work, however, but uh, I do know that they're French and that they've been picking up uh, uh, American uh, veterans uh, to uh, make them hopefully seem like they'll they, they've got the right stuff. They're supposed to create a universe, supposedly that. 
has superheroes in it. Right. But, now, we, I mean, we, we talked about that before. And now that he's saying it's French, uh, that, that helps me a lot. Because uh, actually, France is having a much... Uh, the French comic book uh, industry is doing really well. I mean, they're kicking butt over there, not unlike in America. So, uh, or, or you know, Japan's doing really well too. Uh, so that's a good thing, actually. That's a good thing. Get the French involved. Yeah, uh, yeah. When more baguettes and cheese and stinky armpits sounds good. Yeah, that's what baguettes. Baguettes. <laughs> baguettes. Yeah, but all right, good cool. Myself. So, who is Rob Levine? Someone inform me. Rob Levine is a, a editor from DC. He from uh, let me let me remember what he was for a while uh, let me see i know he was he was a top one of the top senior ones mm-hmm. oh you're talk, you're confusing his name with um paul levin levin mhm mm. yeah cuz it it's not ringing a bell for or me paul dude. levitz i'm sorry but you you might be confusing with paul levitz he was a senior editor for a long time Mm, that could be. It says that sure. he's been doing editorial for Justice League and Batman uh, uh, for uh, uh, some years now. Hmm. Four yeah. years, it says. All right, cool. Mm. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. We've we talked about this humanoids, uh, humanoids thing before, and we'll see how it develops. Uh, I mean, it, it could be really cool. And like I said, uh, the, uh, the French uh, uh, combo book market is very healthy. Uh, so getting things in, involved be nice. And yes, Eric, uh, he, he he's counting Chester's triggerisms. He's up to number 77. Oh, yeah. uh, the French. Yeah. Yes, yeah. dude. The French trigger me a lot. All right? Fine. That you, that you say yeah, it's healthy. You know what else is d- distinct about it? They don't try to reinvent it. They stick to what they know. Yeah. They don't change it. People don't ask for it to be changed. They appeal to more people. And they just... They're consistent. They're not trying to reinvent anything. Now, granted, no. they don't have a universe or a shared universe with a lot of those uh, European books. Uh-huh. But still, they, they just try to tell really good stories illustrated by really good artists. Their coloring is very similar across all of the European comics. They still have a painterly style. Um, so, yeah, it's it doesn't change like we do here and try to reinvent the wheel all the time. And- and also, I think, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the French comics have some of the best artists in the business, dude. I mean, the, the, some of the stuff come out of the French uh, uh, comic books is absolutely stunning, dude. Just oh, stunning. did they do Batman the Dark Prince Charm? I had no idea, but I have seen some stuff coming out of there. And, of course, I think this is going back to Mobius, right? Yeah. That's where it's going yes, back. Yes, yes, Batman yeah. Dark Prince Charming was done by one of the French artists, and that artwork is incredible it if is, you guys yeah. haven't read that. It's great art. Let's see, he... This one, he was the editor of Blue Beetle. Oh, wait. He's Italian. Sorry. Okay. It's pretty much the same. <laughs> it's pretty much the same. Hey, it's hardly like different, Tyrell. right? Uh, Nick, uh, Nick C says, can you guys talk about John Cassidy uh, is uh, working there? What happened to him? I have no idea, dude. Cassidy. Yeah, I don't That's know. Uh, Bill from Argos Creation says uh, he's the son of Gary Levine. Gary Liv- uh, Gary had a very successful furniture outlet store in Denver until he got into trouble with the law for importing illegal animals. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. I could believe that. Yeah, I'm sure this is 100 percent true. We'll it's we'll roll true. with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nixie, yeah. Nixie says Asterix. Oh well, that's not necessarily the greatest art, but uh, that's a lot of fun though. I love uh, I love reading Asterix back in the day, man. That was fun. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving on, uh, cool bit of news. Uh, next bit here. Uh, no, let's watch a trailer. So uh, we're not going to be able to do them all today, uh, but I have two trailers. I have uh, a Watchmen feature. Oh, no. Uh, and I have uh, Enchanted, which is kind of Breaking Bad 2 or something like that. I don't know. It's weird. The El Camino. The El Camino, Skip. yeah. So no, let's go. Let's go watch the Watchmen. Let's do this because this will irritate yeah. everybody. It'll be wonderful. This will make me angry. Yes, so this will. will. This will be good. <laughs> yes, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. We're ready. I'm clicking it. Yeah. Watchmen examines how we, as a society, feel okay. about heroes. Is it uh, how we feel about them. heroes, or is it how about you feel about heroes? I wonder which one that is. Most uh. notably, people who wear masks and fight crime. Hello, Yay. Dude. She Angel kicked everybody's Man. butt. Yay. We have our main character, Strong Woman. Is she in blackface? Watchmen, yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck was that? Whoa, what was that? 
we convinced ourselves that they were gone. But Which was what here? What do you what do you want to look at? This uh Doctor Manhattan. The graphic novel. Why does it look like cardboard? Because, because he is. He's in a, it's a guy in a costume. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not story. like literally Doctor Manhattan. We convinced just, ourselves that yeah. they were gone, but they were just hibernating. Trying to cheer me on to this. They, they made the Rorschach guys all right there. Yeah, they did. Cavalry. They did. Can you give look at the guy? Can you can you describe Soy Boy better? And because of that incident, the police wear masks. Well, wow, she's rough looking, dude. And their families. Pretty soon you couldn't tell the good guys from the bad guys because they were all hiding their faces. Sir, I'm with the FBI. Are your civil rights being violated? Uh, yes, ma'am. They didn't read me my rights. Okay, sorry. I was just kidding. I don't care. It really explores the complexity of uh -huh. who you are when you okay. wear a mask. Okay, I'm bored already. You guys bored? I'm bored. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty bored. Okay, enough boredom. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, though this Watchman looks absolute crap. Uh, talk about not understanding even a little bit what Moore was trying to do in the original Watchman. I mean, just not getting the point. It, it, it shocks me how often I see these people taking original content and simply not understanding it. It's like, are they that stupid or are they just that assholish? I'm not sure. I you think it's number two. I'm pretty sure it's mostly number two. Yeah. Uh, you take a well-known name and then you use that label to push whatever you'd like. Uh, that's a very yeah. old tactic. Mm, like, honestly, it looks well done. It looks like it's of good quality. I just, it looks insufferable. It does look insufferable. Yeah. And I really, really wish they'd stop doing this thing with the ladies. I mean, you can take a female and make her a fighter if you do it the right way. Like, for instance, Black Widow. The way they did with her in Marvel is she's a woman. She's not as strong as they are. As a matter of fact, she's an unenhanced woman in this version of the MCU. And uh, yet she's successful because she fights like a woman should fight. Uh, but they and always want to have the well. woman yeah. fighting like a man and putting muscling up and mm, strengthening people. It's so stupid. It's so stupid. Can you even <laughs> imagine Natalie Portman holding the freaking hammer? Can you? I mean, Jesus, she's like what ninety-two I mean, pounds. We, we won't have to imagine. We won't have to imagine in a couple years. <laughs> it's uh, just, can she uh, even lift the prop? <laughs> I, well, they were having I mean, to hold her strings. hand out, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> But it's I don't just, care how to help her. But I don't understand because you know we have examples like Black Widow that shows okay this is how a woman fights and it looks good it's awesome. But they 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 just want the woman to be the man, and it's like you know I thought you were trying to I thought you were trying trying to complain and say men are horrible. Why are you trying to be the man? I don't get it. It's it's like anti intuitive. Whatever. We're gonna do men but better. Yeah. Did you write this down, Eric? Am, am I triggered by this as well? What number is that? Fifty two. Whatever. Uh, moving on. God. Oh, DC, it's 52. Ah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So this is from Nizarama as well. D Another DC editor, Molly Mahan, jumps to Riot Games, which is an indie developer. Mm -hmm. but um, was, And she's from the current generation with a lot of these... Uh, <laughs> Um, titles and every Batman titles. She she was editing that and all that stuff. But the important thing is actually the next article because I it was I was kind of drawing to it because there's editor editor and then there's another article if you can just jump over. I will. Uh, well, uh, it, it, just real quick before I do that, is she mm -hmm. a milkshake uh, type of editor or is she a real editor? Um, I'm not sure. I mean. Like I said, okay. uh, some of the titles she's been working on, I haven't been reading. <laughs> you want this transfer? Not this one. one. Here. No? no? No, 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 no. no. The Fate of DC. Oh, this one. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So so this is a rumor. We were talking oh, ab about it. Um, and this is from Cosmic Book News. Um, the Fate of DC coming soon could be sold off by T AT&T. AT um, so take this with a lot of salt. But we have been talking about it that, yeah. you know, T uh, AT and T are looking at their portfolios. The shareholders are not happy, and a lot of their uh, upcoming projects is not mentioning DC brand at all in their uh, meetings. Uh, shareholding the owners of uh, Warner Media, the CEO is not talking about DC, and Warner Brothers is not talking about DC. That's under Warner Media, mm -hmm. so a lot of speculations are 
coming about that maybe uh, T- at and is maybe quietly going to sell off uh, DC, which could be a bad thing because a lot of people say, oh, if they sell it off, then somebody will buy it. No, when you usually sell off of IP, they break it up. Yeah, that's true. And multiple true. and multiple company would so you won't have Superman or the Holy Trinity together. Um, you would have it all spread apart. So mm. um so that's the only thing. And the fact that there's more and more rumor, and we've been talking about it and kind of seeing the signs about it, and the recent then uh Didio comments from last Comic Con about you know we have been failing telling you know good stories, basically kind of leaves a little more print uh, uh, more credibility f- for this story. Well, of course, I would say to Dan Didio, then uh, if that's the fact, then why did you cancel good uh, uh, Super Sons in in favor of your stupid agenda? Uh, but uh, you know whatever uh, Dan Didio uh-huh. is for, as far as I'm concerned, he's the main problem. Uh, people like to throw away Tom King, Bendis, et cetera, et cetera, all the other kind of non, you know, decorna, deconic and stuff like that. But I think it's Didio. I think it all comes down yeah. to him and his stupid agenda. Uh, but um, uh, this in, in and of itself is a story. Uh, you know, uh, we have to ask the question, would it be better if it got broken up though? I mean, cause you would have people more eager to take the titles and do something with them and, and, and try to be successful with it. Where obviously DC is just bored with their, their own, their own production. I mean, obviously I want to see someone who loves Batman writing Batman, right? Not someone who hates superheroes. Right. Exactly. Like, like Peter Tomasi. I want him on the mainline Batman uh, story. I just read his, the closing of his current arc over at the Dictive comics. And it was excellent. It read like a nineties uh, Chuck Dixon book. Seriously, guys, if you're disappointed with Batman by Tom King, switch over well, to Detective Comics by Peter Tomasi. It is fantastic. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Can you imagine DC buying the most popular character, or not DC, uh, Marvel and Disney, excuse me, buying the most popular characters? So you would have Superman oh, and oh. Batman in-house? Wow. I didn't think about that. I don't, that's, I don't that's want terrifying. to see that at all. That's terrifying. I don't. I don't want Disney to own more things. They Disney yeah. needs to be broken up. It's getting ridiculous over there. Right, but it could happen, you know. And if if this becomes a reality, that is a reality that could happen. Disney buys up the most popular character from DC, and now you have uh, instead of having Captain mm-hmm. America, you have Superman fighting along with uh, Spider Man. Yeah, and but that stuff. that's not what Disney would do. If they bought the characters, no, they would shut they them would down. Buy it all. And mm-hmm. if they could, they would. Mm-hmm. But they'd shut it down. No, they would no, see no, no, no. no. That you would not see Superman no. at all. They would bury it. No, yeah, they no, would. not true. They make way too. What pro... what keeps these things up and what keeps them going is licensing, right? Being on a toothbrush, being on sheets, being on stuff. That's what why these companies still even are able to publish. It's all their licensing. So if if Disney bought this, they wouldn't even. They'd buy it all. They wouldn't separate it. If they could, because uh, but, they want it all. If yeah, they, but they could mine those stories that are already. Yep, yeah, but you're forgetting the point that uh, Captain Marvel is the strongest there is, and that's what they're pushing, and they want her to be the face of the MCU. That's they've been, they've been very clear about it, dude. There's no way you bring Superman into that because there's no one stronger than Superman. It just it it, it would mm-hmm. absolutely kill the whole thing they've created. So the only no, option they would they, have would be to shelve him. Inter- I don't think they would actually Captain Marvel either. naturally radiates kryptonite and magic at the same time and red sun solar rays. So she would beat up Superman easy. Mm-hmm. Now I can see him using I Batman don't think they or would something like that. these universes like that movie wise. I don't think they would. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. But uh, it's, um, it's an interesting thing. I didn't even think about Disney getting involved with it. I was thinking about smaller companies mm-hmm. buying it up, to be honest with you. But uh, And yes, I do agree with you. Yeah, as a comics, Chuck Dixon does rule. Yes. Uh, but uh, anyway, enough of this. Enough of it. Not on Stupid news. I'm going back over to something more interesting. Cactus Coyote. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, uh, we're going to do a, go through your perks here. Uh, we're going to start out with your featured, which is very nice that you have that. And it's a Spinneroony High Roller, 25 bucks USA. What is this? Tell us about it. Well, uh, for what it says there, you get both newsprint. Uh, if we hit the goal and go a little bit over, our first stretch goal is to upgrade to glossy paper um, of Cactus Coyote. So we have two covers. We have the A cover by Andrea Boscolo, 
uh, the main artist, and Stephen Cannon on colors, uh, both the uh, colorist for Jack Irons issue number two and the colorist for Cactus Coyote. Um, or you can get the uh, Mr. What's-His-Name or uh, Bridge of Faust uh, variant, which is a much more striking manga kind of style cover. Mm-hmm. Um, in that case, you get both on, the, on that perk, and you'll get one of the random casino chips. Sweet. All right. And do we have an example of these covers or are they uh, future? Things? Yeah, go on down. Go on down. It's 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 in the story. So keep going further down. Then you got my Q racer. Keep going. Keep going. And it'll have cover A and cover B. You'll see. Here, oh, here we go. Cover, cover A. a. Yeah. Oh, very nice. That was and awesome. And cover I love B. That one. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. A much better. A is fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's actually an homage cover to uh, uh, a manga within a manga. <laughs> so I'm curious <laughs> that anybody will be able to pick that up uh, pick that out as uh, as it gets a wider release well it, you know it's kind of interesting to me uh, a lot of uh, i'm hearing a lot of westerners uh, use the word manga now uh in their style they're making manga this manga that uh now that i live in japan and i've been here for well, almost 20 years uh and uh, my kids are big into manga, manga particularly my daughter uh and uh, so i have a lot of exposure to manga than i that i didn't have before and uh the one thing i can say about uh, western manga it's not manga at all it's not even close to being manga. Read our 40-page manga issue. It is a manga. All right. Straight up. Right to left, uh, how it's set up, how it's written. Um, this will be pretty close to, but it's not a manga. This is a Western. Oh, it, this you're not going to make your sure. body read right to lift, are you? That because doesn't look like right that to left. It does. That will drive me insane. Left. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> a fan translation we actually have uh the uh oh. the actual uh japanese in the work too but uh, that that's down the road i see mm-hmm. uh well uh the reason i say they're not manga is because uh, manga uh has a, a certain wacky quirkiness to it uh that uh, yes. uh westerners just don't get we don't find it funny we don't find it interesting it isn't our thing it's not our culture uh so it's hard to copy that successfully because we don't like it right um and uh it, that's what i mean by not being manga uh i well, was not necessarily a good, um, bad thing very much. i'm a big manga reader um right now i'm going through battle angel alita but i've torn through all of dragon ball which started off as a gog- gag manga which i preferred before it went z uh there's there's a i've read quite quite a bit i i, pre- I love manga Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, could I write it? No, but dollar coins is much more into that. And again, if, if, if you want to see what I'm talking about, it's that 40 page preview issue on, on top of it is done manga style. It's loose art, uh, like a lot of mangaka do because they're very restricted schedules. Um, it, it's, uh, it's got the wacky quirkiness that you're talking about. Now, is it authentic wacky quirkiness that, that would be up to you to judge, of course, yeah. but, um, I believe so. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think the Japanese balk at it as well, simply because it's a it's a cultural thing. Uh, maybe yeah. it's a little bit of that as well. Uh, but uh, now I see you have a digital here for three bucks, uh, and I do apologize. I don't have the Japanese up today, but I was doing stuff earlier, so I'm I'm actually living in San Francisco right now. Hi, hi, I'm in San Francisco, hi. the exact place that Chester would live. You know. Of course, uh, but uh, VPNs are wonderful. Uh, but nevertheless, I usually am showing this in uh, Japanese uh, uh, yen, uh, which looks a lot better. Uh, but the question I have for you is this: uh, It's cool that you got a digital. I, I rock on, dude. But why yeah, is it so yeah. cheap? Why wouldn't it be? Uh, nah, I gave my digital for Jack with a dollar. Uh, yeah, my no. digital now currently for for Jack Irons on Comicsology, Comic Central, and all the main drive-through comics. All the main drive things are, are three bucks. So that's kind oh, dude, of the you thing. want Comicsology. Yeah. Well, how many pages are in your book here? Uh, this one will be forty. Okay. Uh, Jack uh, number no, one was thirty-two. Okay. Really uh, well, cool, all right. I, I think I would have charged 10 bucks at least for it, though, to be honest with you. And we're seeing a trend of uh, a lot of people doing the digital but charging very close uh, to what the book has cost. Texas Coyote uh, was to knock down the prices I see. Um, for Indiegogo. It just was insane. It's been insane for freaking ever, it's especially uh, folks who are making tons of money could afford to put the books down at a cheaper price, but they're keeping it at a high level because it's more profitable, mm-hmm. which is great. That's, that's absolutely great. Uh, sure. It makes your job harder, too, because you need more backers. For instance, you can buy into this Cactus Coyote physical issue for $5 and $5 shipping, not $25 and then $10 shipping. No, 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 $5 and $5 shipping, $10. That's what we want. We need people to be able to buy and enjoy the comics and, and put their money down without having to worry. You know, 25 bucks is, is a good chunk of a nice deep meal out. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it, there's a lot there. Yeah. And, uh, 
a mainstream comics are too damn expensive, let alone these uh, artisanal ones. So, uh, you know, try and make it accessible. That's sure. that's what we're doing. But you do realize you're not going to get me a comic uh, for $10 shipping. You're not going to do it. You're going to pay 25 bucks minimum, dude. Uh, so far in both these campaigns, that has not been my case. And uh, if you want to talk about that off air, I can. But uh, that's not been the case. Uh, if you're shipping it overseas, absolutely that's the case. That's what I mean. But I live in Japan, it, dude. Yeah, 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 we're not getting you that, but uh, we took those hits on oh, on Jack I see. Irons. I see, I see. But uh, we only got twenty five uh, international backers out of oh. four hundred and fifty. I get it. So that's yeah. you know, that's the difference. Yeah. Um, now with this, uh, we're we are charging a lot more shipping international. Uh, I believe it'll probably be about twenty five bucks for you if you went in and then typed in your your Japanese address or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, then that that would change. But it's five dollars dom- domestic. I guess I should oh. clarify that. Well, that's cool. And uh, and March Hare, I agree 100% with Nick as well. Uh, the, uh, and I know Booster does too, because uh, Mr. Miracle started off wonderfully and it ended abominably, yeah. dude. Yeah. 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 The ending just sucked. It was really bad. And, and uh, that March... was at the time when I believed in Tom King. Yeah, right. I believed. He defended him, even. Yes. Uh, yeah. He I did. even did that. No, it's going to be great. Don't worry. Tom King knows what he's doing, he knows how to write a book. I read a Tom King story once. <laughs> uh, March here says I asked my local uh, 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 my local comic book store uh, to get Attack on Titan number one for me today I'm already reading Berserk Berserk was badass dude I love Berserk uh, and uh, uh, Attack on Titan I'm not as big a fan of it uh, my, my daughter likes that uh, but my son and I are kind of like eh eh uh, but the story is interesting anyway. Uh, they continuing here saying, I can't believe uh, 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 Anna DuVernay is working with Tom King on her new Gods film. Uh, it's like DC Movies wants to fail. Yeah, right? Exactly. And that, I mean, what a horrible choice to do your new Gods movie. C- completely wrong, uh, wrong fit. Uh, March here says, uh, yeah, Nixie, it's like uh, driving off a cliff. Yeah, I agree, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's continue here, guys. Uh, we're up to a $5 thing. What's this right here, dude? That's the first cover of Cactus Coyote. If you want cover A, that's what you go for, the $5 uh, and uh, $5 shipping uh, domestically. Uh, it'll vary as as it goes, as we were discussing. Uh, but, yeah, that's the cover A right there if you want to choose cover A. Wow, man. These are these are really cheap, dude. Yeah, that's what we were hoping they would get. Uh, but, you know, you're not putting so, such a heavy bet down. You know, it's it's less uh, less worry. But, you know, uh, again, you need more backers out of that. So you it was do. a uh, calculation. Risk so uh, so far hasn't paid off, but we got time. Who knows? Yeah, well, and here's your B cover as well for five bucks. And I yeah. think that's a, that's another exactly. reason you talk about profit, uh, people wanting to make more money off it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's the point. Uh, but another thing with uh, having the 25, 20 to 30 dollar price range is you need less backers to fund, right? Uh, so yeah. that it's an it's a it's an issue, <clears throat> but um, but I'm seeing a pretty consistent number of people across all these perks here so far. Uh, but uh, this is a fifteen dollar one. What's going on with this? Let's see. Uh, this one, uh, you get your name put somewhere in the background of the comic, and you get your cover A. Um, it it could be a marquee sign, it could be a debtor's note, it could be a receipt, it could be a wanted poster, just wherever we can fit it in uh, for fifteen, and then of course shipping. Um, you can get that, and I believe that's limited. Yeah, it's limited to twenty five. So uh, it's not going to be too hard to get all those in. No, I think that's pretty cool. And maybe I should do it just for the uh, having Cornelius in there somewhere. That'd be funny. Yeah, you could. Let me see here. Spin a roomy, fifty dollars. Time shaker. You get both of them. You get all three uh, casino chips, and then you get that eleven by seventeen uh, Cax Coyote poster, uh, which was down there by uh, Amoeba Cannon and um, our wonderful logo artist and concept. Uh, well, well, concept gallery guy, uh, also fan art gallery guy, uh, Zero Fox. Now, how come this one isn't your featured? Just curious. Uh, because it's not our top seller. I see. Well, well, good answer. Uh, we got another fifty to a uh, dollar here. One. This is a newsprint bundle. Uh, what, what, yeah, you'll this? get twelve. Of them. You'll get twelve of them. Uh, your choice of variants. You know, oh, six and I six. See. It's the LCS uh, or, or uh, perk, yeah. or whatever. You know. I see. Yeah, no, this is for the uh, comic book stores. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, if uh, you want to, like, you know, what, what, anybody else needs that many copies, you know. <laughs> so this is more uh, store stuff. The thing, uh, double, yeah. You know. Now this one right here is for the uh, the, the the backer. Uh, so what's this hundred fifty dollar one here? Uh, you'll get two pages from the uh, Cax Coyote manga, um, the actual, um, you know, the the line art pages that uh, Dollar Coins did, and you'll get them signed. 
Uh, you'll get both covers and you'll get all three of the casino chips. Nice. So you get a little bit of unique art out of that. Uh, this one here is very uh, uh, similar. Uh, it's uh, more that you'll get uh, a part in a special page. Um, let me see. Uh, you, know, da, 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 da. you get your name on a VIP page and a special thank you page. Uh, they'll be drawn on a page with a group of five silhouette figures, which are those backers who back at that level. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, you just get to be part of the actual story instead of just the background. You're 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 in the back uh, back, but you get more of a presence. Wow, that's cool. That's kind of and like, then you uh, get all the other stuff too. It's kind of like Ethan having uh, the tier where uh, you could be uh, one of the people getting killed by the uh, by the wasps. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, this is a big, big one. 500 bucks, dude. Same thing, but you'll have more of a recurring role because you'll actually be one of his loan sharks. Ah, that's cool, dude. That's hey, Booster, this one's for you. You should be a loan shark. No comment. Oh, yeah, you get you get the poster. You'll get your, your name on that special page. You'll get the... the and, and you'll get a loan shark uh, business card, it looks like. That's a new addition since... Uh, since I last looked at that, very cool. Yeah, we we did um we did a little gift uh, business card. We gave out Cax Coyote's business card with uh, issue number two of Jack Irons. So uh, I Just think that's that's good. Say, uh, the consideration. I've yes, got no money. I know, Booster. I know. You that's. Can you loan me some? Huh? You got a problem with loan sharks? What, what's going on over here? <laughs> I just think it would be funny as hell having a five foot one uh, bald Bigfoot fat guy as a loan shark. It'd be awesome, dude. Uh, uh, if, you could, <laughs> if you could ever uh, pay back your money, I I would I, I I'd hate to have someone break your legs. Yeah, right. Yeah, it'd be great, dude. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, that's cool, dude. That's a nice little perk, actually. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, guys, this is a this is a fun looking comic. I mean, look at it. It's got really clean art. Uh, it's done in a kind of a wacky style, but that's fun too. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, but you guys know I was mentioning uh, 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 T Bird and Throttle earlier, which I'm going to uh, do a, a, a mini review here on uh, Coffee Aki Habato this Sunday. Uh, but um, uh, actually, it reminds me a little bit of that. Now, uh, uh, T-Burn Throttle is a little more, more serious than I think this is, uh, but um, it is uh, it is a similar art, and it's a lot of okay. fun to read, dude. I really enjoy it. Okay. So that's that's one piece. Cover A. What do you want about? No, that was, uh, there is some One Piece uh, influence in Cactus Coyote, uh, mm. in particular in the casino bits. But uh, uh, no, that covers uh, – I don't really want to – spoil. again, I want people to get to get it right because it is a manga within a manga. Manga within a manga. As in it's a mangaka-based manga. It's a story of two man mangaka, but uh, it's one of the manga that are is in that story. Mm. Well, we have That's interesting... what that covers on manga. We have an interesting comment here from uh, March Hare. He says, uh, Chester, I will say this about Cody. There was some snafu, and I didn't get my Jack Irons when I should have. Uh, I brought it to his attention, and he was on it immediately. Huge props on customer service. Sweet. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, March. Um, very, very much. I've always tried to do right by our backers uh, as best I can. It's... Uh... It's been a shaky road, you know, just diving into this with no background in it um, and just swim in the water as best I can, keep my head above water and uh, super glad. I hope you enjoy issue number two if you backed it, which I think you did. I think you backed at that level. If you backed uh, to get a physical issue, which it sounds like you did, then then you got both physical issues at the $25 level. So, uh, yeah, that's um, very cool. Very cool. And I, I'm uh, always happy to – anybody has any questions about any of this, uh, backer or not, always always feel free to contact me. Uh, most likely on Twitter at cowboy underscore steel. Cowboy underscore steel. Interesting. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, well, uh, like I said, good looking comic. Go check it out for yourself. Uh, if it's something you can back, even at the uh, pretty low tiers, man. If uh, uh, you know, back it, give us some support. Uh, even if you can't, though, definitely share it out. That helps out. Let your friends and family see it. More eyes on it, the better. Uh, I think it's a fun looking comic, though. Uh, so uh, definitely check it out and see if it's something that's good for you guys. Uh, but uh, I appreciate uh, everybody coming in today. Uh, let me jab back over to the uh, other side here. 
And uh, yeah, but uh, thank you guys for the chat of coming in. Uh, we appreciate it, of course. You guys have uh, so much insight and information to, to uh, join in the conversation. It's really cool. Uh, do keep in mind, if any of you want to come on and be on the show with us and give us your information live, you can do so by simply hitting me up in Twitter and uh, down below. The link is easily gotten to. And uh, I'll put you on the show, man. Uh, this is Fan Speak, and we want more people speaking. Uh, everybody in here is a fan. That's the whole point. Uh, so a lot of fun. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys coming in here. Uh, but uh, definitely go over and take a look at what Cody is doing uh, with his Iron Verse and uh, check out uh, Cactus Coyote. Uh, but beyond that, guys, uh, we appreciate you. And uh, it's time for Denali to do his thing, man. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Cody, for being our guest today and talking about your Iron Verse and Cactus Coyote. I uh, hope that your project is successful and meets its goal. Um, join us tomorrow for Comics News Today and the Drawn and Core uh, Fan Edition at 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, tonight, at less than an hour from now, is the Drawn and Core Pro Edition mm -hmm. at Blacklist Universe. Go go support uh, Howl Comics. Go support Twitter. Alan. Oh, yeah. yeah, that guy's crazy join us. talented. I'm really happy you won. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Join, uh, follow us on Twitter if you haven't. Share the video um, and let us know what you think. But as always, your perception shapes your reality, so always make it a good one. Namaste. 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 Good night. Later, guys. Aloha. Take care, folks. <laughs>